sound good? <laughs> so I'm Seth Denning. Whoops. Hold on. Uh, this session is about redesigning classrooms. So it's about taking a um, kind of a boring classroom and redesigning it uh, with furniture, but also just with ideas and different ways of teaching. Um, there was another session. Was anybody in the the session from Heartland with? Um, it was uh, Susan Schrader and Lance Goldholm. Okay, so I went to that too because they were kind of talking about the same thing, but their focus was really more on libraries, where my our focus is kind of more on classrooms and other spaces. So I think that, you know, and you're kind of saying the same things but in different kinds of ways. So I think that's interesting. Um, the other funny thing is, oh by the way, uh, I'm not alone. I'm Seth. Lisa is here from Great Prairie. Lisa Jacobs and Jane is there. Not feeling well, but she's here. So if you have questions, um, we're going to talk about kind of how we redesigned one of our spaces at an AEA. Um, so this is not going to be like a, here's the perfect solution for you, but it might give you some ideas. And we're going to give you some kind of uh, big ideas when you think about spaces for yourself. We have some schools with the same type of... Right. More and more schools are, are doing classroom redesign. It's kind of a... Fun topic. Here's something else that was that's interesting. Uh, we just had a keynote, and the keynote started out with with a bunch of slides about here's this presentation that I had to attend, and guess what? You know what? Like the first five minutes of my presentation, this is. So it's kind of so you're, you're gonna see some. I'm just warning you. Anyway, but it's hilarious. I was like, that's my presentation. <laughs> okay. So uh, by the way, if you want to um, follow along. With this presentation, it's a Google presentation, so it's shortlinks.gpaea.org slash itech21c. And if you miss it, this link will show up on other slides too, so if you get lost. But I'll give you a couple seconds to get there. Okay, your couple seconds are up. <laughs> it will show up again. Okay, but, uh, here's the other thing too. If you have comments or questions throughout this thing, please, you know, I don't want to just stand up here and, and talk. So, just a question. Okay, traditional classrooms, we're going to talk about how the room, just the room itself, can affect the learning. And I want you to just think for a couple seconds, what's the most boring learning experience you've ever had in your life? Okay, just think of, wow, that was a boring thing that I had to sit through. And then think, what was the classroom like? Okay. Here we go, here's slides of rows of desks. <laughs> rows of desks, rows of columns. Now this is funny because these are really old pictures that I found off of Wikipedia, but look at this. I was in a classroom um, last week and I just snuck in and took a couple pictures. Yeah, this, isn't that a beautiful room? Look at how shiny the floor is. Yeah. Uh, but this is today, and you know what? Here's the funny thing about this. This is a one-to-one -one school that is doing great things. Okay, like as a school, they are, their one-to-one -one is one of the best in our region. We've got Southeast Iowa, and it's one of the best, but you know what? This teacher isn't doing it. Okay, and you can kind of tell just by the, the room. Okay, guess what she does? Guess what she teaches, first of all? What does she teach? English. Take, not English, but close. Social studies. She's a great history person, right? Teaches, lectures a lot. Okay, anyway. It's my little classroom, too. So, she me. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> Why do we want to worry about the room, especially at a technology conference, right? What's the, because this, we're not talking about tech. We're talking about the room. Isn't one-to-one -one enough? Okay. We've got computers everywhere. Isn't that enough? Uh, isn't a projector in every classroom enough? Isn't an interactive whiteboard in every classroom enough? I've got a document camera. Isn't that enough? <clears throat> what about flipping my classroom? I thought um, the keynote speaker was very good about that, right? One to one, or flipping your classroom sounds great. It's high tech, you know, but it's like, wait, they're not even getting what we're doing the videos about. So, and here's the other thing. The furniture that I'm going to talk about isn't enough either, right? It's just a piece, but it's important. So here's the thing. You can have all the latest technology in your classroom, and you can still have a teacher-centered, right? Me in the front of the room lecturing to all of you. You do all your individual work, you sit and get, right? And it's boring, okay? Especially if I lecture first, which is what Ramsey was talking about. Okay. 
So here's the thing. It's not really about the technology, but it's not really about the room either. It's really about creating an environment, like he was talking about, that really enables the learning, right? And disables bad teaching. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, for those people that think, oh, I'm a great lecturer, I like to lecture, and yeah, I'm really good at it. You know what, I was a history teacher for, I don't know how many years, and I used to lecture, and I, I thought I was really good at it, and you know what, I really wasn't. I, I was a great storyteller and stuff, but lecturing is really not what it's about, especially if you front load the lecture first like he was talking about. Okay, so let's talk about our room that we had. Um, by the way, the way this works from now on is that here's an outline over here. There's the website for this presentation up there, so if you need to get that again. And then things are going to flow over here. Okay, so we had an old um, computer lab with about 30 old computers in it. It had, we had Macs and PCs, laptops, and they were getting old. By the way, the, the room was a, not, maybe about this big. And it was set up so that there was a big projector up in the front of the room and kind of a teacher station here. And then there was a U of tables with computers there. And then another U against the wall of computers, right? About 30 computers, computer lab. Um, so the deal was we had to, those were getting old and unused. Um, this was put in a while ago when people, teachers didn't have their own computers. So they would have to come into our lab and use a computer. But now everybody has their own devices like crazy. So nobody, started, nobody used our computers at all, the laptops. So they came to the room and they just shoved the old laptops kind of out of the way. Um, so what were, what were we going to do with these things? Should we replace those laptops or just find a different purpose for the room? And you can guess what we did. We found a different purpose for the room. OK. So this was a couple years ago. And we had conversations for about two years, wasn't it? <laughs> about two years of conversations about what should this thing look like? If we're going to really redesign this classroom, because it was a lab, it was a classroom, what should a 21st century classroom look like? Um, and we did a lot of research and looked into a lot of, you know, what's new in education? What's 21st century learning look like? What do we want kids to be able to do? Okay, and we came up with these kind of big ideas. And for the rest of the presentation, I'm just going to go through these big ideas and show you what we did with it. Okay? First of all, uh, everything in the classroom has to be mobile and flexible. So you're going to see pictures of everything on wheels, or if it's not on wheels, it's easily liftable, like this stool. Okay? Uh, really flexible. You, can, you know, any teacher can come in there and use the room for any purpose. It's, yeah. Next thing. We wanted to have collaborative writing services for each group. This room that we have is all about group work, a lot of it. There's also spaces for individual work, too. But we wanted to have some kind of a writing surface for each group so that they could collaborate. We also wanted to have a digital display of some kind for each group, so we had a lot of TVs in there. You'll see pictures of that. We wanted it to be hard okay, for teachers to come into the room and be the center of attention. Okay, this is probably challenging some of your thinking about <laughs> classrooms, right? But we wanted to disable teacher-centered instruction. There, you'll see a little bit, there's no front of the room, there's no teacher sta station, there's no anything. It's, it's very hard for teachers to come in there and lecture, or even do, like, whole group instruction. It's very hard. And then the last thing, the big thing, that is that uh, we wanted to enable student-centered learning. That's the whole purpose of this, of this thing. OK. So here's just some pictures of what our room looks like. Um, again, this is what we did. It doesn't mean you have to do it, OK? Um, some people have copied what we, do, what we did, and that's not the purpose of what we did. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you have to. Do whatever is right for you. Um, here's another picture of the room, just to give you an idea. And we'll go through some of these elements here in a little bit. OK, and there we go. So it's colorful, a lot of white space. So I'm going to go through each one of these things. If you have questions, by the way, let me know. First of all, mobile and flexible. We have uh, everything is on wheels. 
Or if it isn't on wheels, it's pretty easy to move. Everything is wireless. So in our classroom, we don't have we have projector or like we have projectors. We've got um, displays everywhere, but you don't have to hook up anything to the display to, to project. Okay, you can be anywhere in the room and show your stuff on the display someplace. Our tables fit together. They are modular, so you can do like individual tables, but you can also put everything together. There are electrical outlets everywhere in that room for everything that needs to be charged and, and uh, plugged in. We also have a lot of other stuff in the room that is, we can bring it in the room, but we can also take it out. It's very flexible. So if we want to do a thing like a makerspace for that day, we'll bring it all in with a 3D printer and stuff like that. If people need to have laptops, we roll them in, we roll them out. Okay. Our tables. We love these tables. These are collaboration tables. Who made those tables? Do you remember? <laughs> That's okay. They were very affordable. They were very affordable. We got those in around the three hundred dollar range. Uh, getting electricity in was a little tricky. Right. Uh, there are different places that make them, so um, I'd have to look up exactly which one we went with. Right. These tables seat six adults. It, it doesn't look like they do, but they do. The only um, problem we had, and we're putting in a center in a tunnel. I love this table too because you can efficiently get more people around it, and not take up a lot of floor space, yeah, like a right. circle. Uh, but the issue we had is the actual vendor we went through, we couldn't get a writable surface on this table. Um, I know Prison Industries makes this one because I wanted to get from them, but there's some quality issues, so we ordered from different places. Right. So you just kind of have to weigh your, your options on that. Yeah. Um, so we have this kind of table. I'm going to show you the next kind of table we have. We have rounds. If you notice, um, there isn't a fourth chair here, but this big round table only seats four adults and it's because of where the legs on the table are. So we can actually get more adults around this or students okay, than we can around that thing. But it's cool because if you notice the uh, diameter, the, the curve of this table, you can fit them together with those other tables and you can make big blobs of tables. And everything is on wheels, so you just have to you know, unlock the wheels and shove things around. And, and people do this all the time. Um, you know, just move stuff around. So it's cool. And yeah, if we were going to uh, redo this again, we would get the label services. So, um, the chairs. Most of the main seating are these um, these chairs. These are steel case known chairs. We like them a lot. Um, they're halfway comfortable to sit in all day. But they come with like this base here so that students can put all of their stuff in, in the chair. And if you need to regroup students, you just say, okay, you go over there and you just take all their stuff with them, right? They just roll along very nicely. These chairs also come with desks and cup holders and things built into them. We didn't want to do that, okay? We wanted to really make this room focus on collaborative groups. And if you put like a uh, traditional <coughs> desk thing on there, suddenly it's just a rows and columns individual student desk. Right, so we just wanted to forget that thing and just have it be in group stable. We also have these stools. We've got a bunch of these. But they're hockey stools. Okay, H-O-K-K-I. These are really nice. They are rounded on the bottom. And it's for those students that just have to move. Right? And here's another one too. This is kind of rounded on the bottom. We only have this one as like a demo, but it's kind of interesting. Now downstairs, there's a vendor. And we saw this and like, oh, they've got those stools. These are not hockey stools, but they're close, okay? Um, and I want you guys to try this out if you have it. And I just borrowed this from them. Um, the only difference between this one and the hockey stools, this one is a little flatter, so it doesn't rock as much. And it's got a rubberized top where the hockey stools kind of have a uh, foam top. And the kids can kind of destroy them if they try hard enough. But seriously, try this thing out. I'm going to just put it here. Try it out. Because it's cool. You know, have demo it. You can just sit here and wiggle all day long. It's great. So we had a second grade classroom that had some like this <coughs> for their rideable tables, and they were able to find small rideable surface tables for about a hundred dollars, so it's very affordable. Um, but they um, didn't have the rubber on the bottom, so you might consider your classroom if you have carpet, it's probably not an issue. But if you have something like a finished floor, it might be an issue. Yeah. Um, noise. And the noise. I, right. I had those like buckets, <coughs> like oh, buckets, yeah. but you flip them over. Um, 
yeah. on that linoleum close. There's that. All right. We have other seating too. This is like one of our little kind of breakaway little either individual work spots or you know small group places. This is a nice couch. It's got the high back, so if you wanted to just kind of get away from everybody else, you can <coughs> and sit. Notice we also have power everywhere. So on all the furniture, even the tables, we've got power built in. There are um, USB outlets there too for phones and tablets and things. Um, for the tables, we have these drop-in electrical uh, things. Okay, now, if you go and buy a table that has the power built into the tables, they are very, very expensive. Like, crazy expensive. Instead of just getting a $300 table, suddenly the price jumps up to like a thousand bucks. Okay? So we got the $300 table, and we had the furniture company drill out the right diameter for these kits. And we got these kits from like Amazon or something like that. They're like $50 kits. And just pop those things in, and suddenly you've got a table with electrical power. It's hard to see with this picture, but there are three outlets and a couple of USB things, um, but you can get those kits cheap instead of spending a lot of money. Um, we also have things to hold Expo markers. I designed that holder, by the way, on, the, on our 3D printer, so if you want the design, I'll watch it. I think that's version 3. That's version 3, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, another table. We have a large couch kind of collaborative area, which you'll see, see a little bit too. This table is our most expensive table in the room because it has that power thing built in with this nice cover that flips around and goes down. It's a very expensive table. And we are redoing a room in the, the Atomo office. We are not getting this table again because it's so expensive. Okay. Um, we also have an Amazon Echo, too. You know, this, that thing's cool. Okay. Uh, here we go. So that's everything is mobile, flexible, power everywhere. There's collaborative writing services for each group. What we did was, we had to repaint the walls anyway, so what we did was repainted with idea paint, which is dry erase paint. Turns any surface into a dry erase surface. Okay. Um, here's the thing, we did designs on the wall. We wanted to do designs, like circles and things like that, uh, to make the walls interesting instead of just white. Um, the painter tried to figure out how to do that with the idea paint because idea paint is one of these things where you mix like part A and part B. It's like epoxy. You mix it up and you only have like so long to put it on the wall. Mm -hmm. And to paint with like designs and circles and things like that, uh, you'd have to tape it off and it doesn't work well with, with that kind of thing. The idea paint company said, hey, forget that. Just paint the wall with normal paint, right? With whatever design you want and then cover it with a clear coat of idea paint. Mm -hmm. So really what our walls are are just normal walls with a clear coat over it. And the funny thing was, um, the paint came in to our like, business office people, and they're like, clear paint? Who would buy clear paint? You know, so, but that's kind of funny. We also have um, whiteboards on wheels so that you can move them around. And we have a couple of other surfaces that are sort of techie surfaces. We have a, a Mondo pad in the room, which is sort of like out here, there's a vendor with the big mobile TV thing, so it's actually a computer and big touch screen. Same idea. Um, theirs is actually cheaper than the Mondo pad. Same kind of thing. Ours does have a built-in camera, so we right. do a lot of video conferencing. We do a lot of video conferencing with it. And then we also have a an active board that was in the room before that we just kept, and an active table from the camp too. So you can use all of these things as collaborative writing services. Okay, so here's just a picture of some students writing on our walls. Okay, this is, seriously, if you're going to do one thing in a classroom, um, you know, get your groups into table groups, collaborative groups, but then get writable surfaces, because this is the best thing. People come into our room and they love it. Idea paint, by the way, is very expensive. For like, you know, so many square feet, it's, it's pretty, pretty hot. But there are other companies that make things like Rust-Oleum too, and there are other things out there. Here's, uh, we have, Students come into our room. This is a bunch of first graders, and they are doing sentence work just on the walls. It's very fun. Okay. Uh, there's a big <laughs> display for each group. So we have a room like this. We have six digital displays all around the room. Okay. We've got five HGTVs. They're about ours are about 55, 60 inches. Um, 
We also have a 3D projector in the room for 3D stuff. And the way that they that people connect to this is something called, I don't know how you pronounce this. It's TEQ and then AV and IT, so I don't know if it's Tech Avid, I don't know. Uh, but there are these little boxes. And what you have to do is install a little piece of software on your device, either like an app for your iPad or um, it's a little thing that runs on your computer. But once you get that thing, it takes about two minutes to connect the first time, and after that, it's just, it just goes. It's sort of like an Apple TV or a Chromecast, except it works really well. Um, the only problem with that is that you need a real PC to do that, like you need a uh, Mac or a uh, Windows machine. For iOS devices, we also have Apple TVs, and for Chromebooks, we have Chromecast. Okay, now all these things, uh, all these inputs go into a switch. We've got a really, this is one of the most expensive things in our room, okay, but it's one of the most kind of important. And it's an Intellix switcher. It's a 16 ports in and 16 out. So it's, this is a big box. Um, and so what I can do as, a, uh, as an instructor or as a student is I can go and, and uh, on my laptop or my iPad, I can say, hey, I want to hook up to you know, group number four's input. Okay? You just do that. And then the teacher, if the teacher wants to display group number four's stuff on all the displays, all I have to do is just push a button, you know, group four to all, and there they are. Or you can say, like, well, I want group number four to show up on group number two's display, and uh, it's all controlled by an iPad. Um, that's a really nice thing. You don't need that, right? You can have a 21st century classroom with wireless displays, uh, you know, just by throwing a Chromecast in the back of the TV. But the ability to just move things around, uh, it's it's very slick. Okay, something else with those Tech Abbott inputs. Okay, usually like with a Chromecast or an Apple TV or stuff like that, you have one device that goes to the display, right? Well, these Tech Abbott things, you can actually have four devices go onto one screen. So what you see here are these four teachers, okay, and they each get a corner of that TV, which is really nice when you're using the big, huge, 3D projector that takes up the whole wall in the room because then you can really see like four nice big displays. But again, you don't need that. But that's really if you're looking for stuff and you have a little money, look into those tech habit things. Um, here's another another picture of teachers using stuff. Notice the writing on the wall too. So it's that idea of I can brainstorm my ideas and then I can show what I'm working on. So like I said before, there's no front of the room. We're trying to disable that teacher-centered classroom. We're going to make it purposefully, we're going to make it hard for teachers to do whole group instruction. Okay, now that's, that's kind of our motivation in an ADA. Okay, that might not be your motivation in your classroom. Okay, but that's really what we're going for. And it sounds easy, but sometimes it's old hard. habits die hard. Yeah, so people still want to bring in their PowerPoints. Yeah. And like if we have, today. when we designed our second classroom, we weren't even sure we wanted to put a projector in there. Right, because does, does that become the front of the room? Here's the thing. The front of the room is always wherever the largest screen is. Okay, that's just what people naturally do, and we figured this out once we did this room. I mean, we've got displays everywhere. And you can sit there next to a beautiful 60-inch TV, right? But you know what? When the pr big projector is on, everybody goes like this. And they look at that pr big projector. So it's... We, we try to do different like heights of seating just to give people choices. So we have like some taller seating and some lower seating. And we came across some, they're really individual desks that go up and yeah. down. And when we first like, saw them, we liked them, and they were like, oh no, that looks like a podium. Yeah, so is. we're like, okay, yeah. we group them. But, you know, even for teachers to be able to set their laptop up there and use it, it's not that we're opposed to that. It's yeah. just we don't want to encourage that, you know, this is a podium, therefore I love you. Right. Which, yeah. So there's no teacher desk, right? No teacher's chair, but it, you know, people find ways to do it, okay? Uh, teachers have to walk around because everybody's in a group, right? So, you know, there's no place for the teacher to really be, so they have to move. And uh, it really, just by doing that, that's a very basic thing, but getting rid of that teacher desk forces teachers to get up and walk around and provide that guided instruction and um, small scripts small group scaffolding. 
Okay, so here's just a picture. These are just um, a group of science teachers that were in the room one day. This is the instructor person, okay? Walking around, talking to you know, groups. Um, here's another one. This is the instructor. So it's a lot more, I don't know, personalized. Um, you know, the teacher just isn't sitting down in front of the room with their, you know, their Elmo or whatever. Here are those, oh, go, go ahead. What do you do for audio, for presenter or for each? We're getting there, but that's really good. So uh, usually what the audio does is it comes out of each display, because those are just HDTVs, right? So, um, so that's kind of fun, actually, when somebody wants to show a video or something, and, and you have it displaying on all the TVs. It's kind of like when you go into Walmart or Target, and all the TVs are going at once. So you have to really monitor, like, you know, turn down the audio. But it's all controlled by an iPad, so you can just stand in the middle of the room and just do that. But, yeah. We also have speakers that come out of the ceilings, uh, the ceiling by that 3D projector that are nice and loud. And they are, um, they're speakers that are kind of recessed, but they're actually tipped a little bit in the ceiling so that the sound shoots out of the room. It's a good question, but we're do, we do something else too um, that I'll show you in a second. So these are those learned fit, they, they're like podiums, but they're also just adjustable height standing desks. If you're looking for an, uh, a standing desk because you want to get up and move around as a teacher, try these, okay? They're not crazy expensive. There's a release here and you just grab it and move it up and down. Um, they're really nice. We've got a couple of those. Okay, so furniture that promotes productive group work. The whole point of this room is to try to get students to work together. That's the point of our room. So, uh, yeah, and then that audio thing, uh, we use something that's, one of the vendors is here. Um, I actually saw this vendor, I don't know, three years ago at iTech, and they had this thing called the Flex Club. <coughs> and we were looking into um, kind of productive group work, audio stuff, um, and this system works pretty slick, okay? But here, uh, so just some pictures first about productive grip work. We have this couchy thing that is two levels of seating, so you have an inside couch and then kind of bar stools around it. This seats 12 adults. Um, but then we also have just the regular tables also. Okay, this is the FlexCat system, this is just one of them. I would, if you're interested in this, go talk to the vendor, they're right out, right out there. The way this works, actually, this is a FlexCat microphone, and that's what the speaker looks like in the back. Okay, now, I, I'm not selling FlexCat, okay, or Lightspeed stuff, but it, it works pretty well. Um, like, I don't have to uh, shout in a classroom, and that one little speaker takes care of the audio. The cool thing about the FlexCat system, though, that's not <coughs> just the regular classroom audio thing, is that each table gets one of these pod things. Okay, there's six of them. We have six. The normal set comes in four, which you can get the answer to. Every table gets a little pod. And the teacher walks around with this, but also on this system it has like a little earbud that goes up, okay? So the teacher can do like whole group instruction like I'm doing now, right? And then they can walk around with a little remote and mute, the, mute themselves from going out, you know, through the speaker. And then with that earbud, the teacher can uh, pick out one of these pods to listen to. Yeah. So if like group number six is back in the corner, I can stand anywhere in the room and see what they're talking about. Okay? And then if they need help, on the side of that pod thing, there's a little call button, and they, they hit it, and it beeps in my ear, and the remote flashes like, oh, group number six needs help. Right? So then I can hit group number six's button and talk just through that pod to them. Okay? Or I can listen in to like group number five, they look like they're, you know, screwing off and not on task. I can just say, group number five, get to work. And it just comes through their little pod thing. It's pretty cool. So if you're doing group work and you're concerned about audio, that's a cool system. It's not cheap, okay? And again, I'm not like selling this for the company, but I think it's pretty cool. So, um, other stuff, color and lighting. What we did was we, we looked around and was like, what should we do for educational color, okay? Like, if we're gonna repaint these walls, what are we gonna do? We stuck with three colors. Some people like our color choices, a lot of people don't. But they are, uh, they're green and blue and orange, okay? The reason that we picked the orange 
Okay? It was not because it was like we were all into orange, it's because we were stuck with a Promethean active board that was bright orange. <laughs> it was Promethean orange in the room and we were going to keep it. So it was like, well, if we're going to keep that thing, orange is going to be one of our colors. Okay? So then we picked other colors that went with it. Um, but having too much color in the room, which is what they mentioned earlier today too, too much color can be distracting for people. So. If you look at tech things, though, you'll see that theme a lot with like a neon type color. Um, and we know there's a lot that goes behind color, like grays, and you know, so it does make a difference in choosing right. what atmosphere you want for your room. Right. Has anybody been in Grant Wood's uh, 21st century classroom in there, in Grant Wood and Cedar Rapids? They've got a room that they redesigned. Okay. I don't see any Grant Wood people here, so I can talk bad about it. Okay. <laughs> What they did with their room was sort of like what we did with ours, right? We're putting in the displays and everything, um, collaboration stuff. But they did it all with grays, okay? And it's fine. But you walk into that room and it's like, oh, it's like you're in a cave. And it's got a little ceiling and everything. And it's very gray, okay? Ours is crazy fun because it's like bright orange and blue and green. So with a lot of white space. It's whatever you like. And it's really whatever your, the purpose is of your room, you know? We wanted to just make it fun and exciting. Something else too, uh, we have, um, we replaced our old fluorescent lights with LED lights so that we can dim them. And uh, that's also controlled by the that iPad also. So if you want to bring down the lights, you just hit a button. And it dims them with a nice three second delay so it doesn't hurt your eyes when the lights come back up again. So it's pretty cool. Um, something that's interesting, so this is that clear coat of paint, right, over the regular paint. And we just had circles and shapes on the walls. The funny thing is, once you put circles on the walls with writable stuff over the top, people use these things suddenly as graphic organizers, right? They just go nuts. And so we did this kind of uh, by accident. But when we're redesigning the room for a Tumwa, now we're thinking, oh, we need to be really thoughtful about what shapes we paint on the walls. Because whatever shapes we put on there, people are going to use those shapes to write. Put ideas on. So it's really interesting. Um, we also have one corner of the room that is painted green. Take a guess why? Green screen, right? So we wanted a green screen in the room. <coughs> Excuse me. So we just painted one in. Um, something to think about if you're thinking about painting a room for a green screen. There's some problems with this corner, and it's not the it's not the corner that's the problem really. Even the shadow, the software for the green screen stuff, it takes care of that. Here's the problem right here. See this and that and this? And see this nice gray right here? And the gray carpet. So when you do a green screen thing of that, you know, you can be standing on the beach and it looks like you're in the beach on carpet. Okay, so, so we have to like either get like a, um, I don't know, a rug or a blanket or I don't know, something to cover up those. And we might just repaint these just paint them green, I don't know. Take them out. But that work, works really well. I'm not sure you had green screen in mind when you designed that. We did. We wanted, a, we wanted a green screen spot. But if we would redo it, we would think about the floor now, too. Okay. So here's the thing. I'm almost done. Um, it's really not about the technology in the room, even though our room is full of technology, right? We've got everything controlled by an iPad. We've got wireless everything, but it's not about that. It's really about the learning, and it's about the students interacting with the content. So, you know, the students being close to that content on a big display, and they can write their ideas on the wall right there, right? It's about connecting to that content. And it's about, really, it's about changing the adult behaviors. When the, the instructor, the teacher comes to the room, it's about changing the way they teach instead of that person in front of the room um, delivering the content. It's about more of getting the students to deal with content in, uh, in groups. So here's the thing. Our room is pretty expensive. And if you go through the list of things, it's about $80,000 for what we did. You don't have to do everything we did, right? There are cheap ways that you can do stuff. By the way, how did we pay for our room? Well, remember when we had those 30 computers in the room? We were going to spend about $1,000 for each one of those computers to replace it, right? So to do that would be $30,000. So we just took that money and said, hey, we can buy $30,000 worth of furniture to make it a more collaborative space. But you don't have to do what we did. Uh, you don't have to buy the big fancy couches or the big switcher. You can take 
like uh, tables, you know, cheap tables. You can probably find tables someplace in your district and uh, put them together. Okay. You want to talk about what? Well, last year we had one school that had a second grade classroom, and I think she did it for about five thousand dollars. But she set up um, a couple of futons from Target and put a TV like at the end, and they actually used the Raspberry Pi for the computer. Actually, I think it was like a Kuno, the kid, or a, what are they called? Um, the ones they build from the kit. So yeah, it was, nice. they just added a keyboard and things to it. Right. Uh, they had the hokey chairs, and at that time they didn't have the rideable surface tables, but they found some for, you know, maybe a hundred dollars. And that part at that school has been very well used, the rideable tables. Um, she had added some rocker chairs for the kids just to read in if they want to do individual work. So as you're thinking, think about what kind of spaces you need for your kids. Um, if they need some quiet time or space to work, that's what the game chairs were for. Um, and then she added her big piece, she still used a Promethean board, and she had a U-shaped, I think that was her most expensive piece, probably a couple thousand to do a U-shaped um, seating around it, kind of like ours, but they were talking second graders, and I think she ordered her stuff from a place called Chair Biz or something like that. Uh, do watch the quality though, because she got some of these hokey type chairs, and those were the ones that didn't have the rubber on the bottom, so you don't know those things until you kind of get in there and try it out. Um, and you just kind of look at your kids and your spaces, and I, I think one of the things Seth's trying to share the most is part of it is building the space so you want to go in there and do something. Like even our room, it's just you want to be in there. I mean, yeah. it's just a place you want to be, you, even if you're just having a regular meeting. But we want to make sure we use it for ways we could, and so we're trying as we schedule meetings to find out how we best use the technology to, to fit that. Um, so just figuring out you know, what your needs are and customizing. We have two or three classrooms that they couldn't paint the walls, so they have some boards right. to write on. Right. So you kind of have to look at your own individual needs and kind of grow with exactly. that. Exactly. So like if you have cinder blocks in your classroom, you know, you can't just put writable paint on those and, and be able to paint on. You have to think of something else. But the classroom I visited, it wasn't just about that. It was also about the group work and that the kids right. were learning, like, if they're writing something, they get someone to proofread it first. So it was part of the thing she was establishing in her routines and how she worked with the kids, not just that I have this room, but because I have this, I can work collaboratively. Um, you know, I can connect to someone with a camera outside of the room. So having those tools just to promote, we call it the four C's, but... Yeah, right. It's all about promoting the four C's. Last couple things. You can start small, you don't have to do a whole room, you know, rip out everything. Uh, you can start small with just redesign, just grouping chairs together, and then think about the purpose for everything. Like we, you know, we spent two years thinking about it, but even then we had surprises. So just really be purposeful about every choice you make. And uh, I think that's it. That's it. We might have some people want to share their experiences or things you've tried in your your own rooms or classrooms or things you've seen you'd like to try. Yeah. You have uh, things you've tried in, I mean, this isn't new, I've been into yeah. some classrooms that they try to set up, so it's, you know, preschool's really good at this, creating spaces where the kids are comfortable reading and uh, different heights and things for kids to, to be in, so I don't think it's new, it's just combining it with the technologies that we have. Yeah. How do you handle, um, how do I say this, when technology misbehaves? Yeah, that's fun. Especially when you have a group full of people. Uh, that's where you run around and you think of plan B. And, yeah, no, it's true. Scheduling's been one of our nightmares, making sure the people that are using it know how to use what's in there. And once in a while, we thought we had it covered and we didn't. Yeah. Well, like, you know, if that switcher ever dies, or the iPad, you know, we, we do have a wall panel that can do everything. But if that switcher ever dies, hmm, yeah, we just are going to reschedule it or move to a different room. That's true. I mean, that room is. There's not much 